So indeed, thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, be here today and to present on uh, the AI Forward Forum initiative and the uh, activities that we organize around it. So AI as a term, it evokes many different images to people. And there's at least two topics that are hotly debated uh, that are in the public eye. So one is this idea about the future of work, the future of humanity. Another hotly debated uh, topic is the role that algorithms have on the way we communicate, what information we get exposed to, et cetera. And of course, there's more. We just uh, talked about ethics, right? So there's uh, many more issues surrounding this technology. But uh, the thing that doesn't get that much limelight is this idea that over the course of the past almost 70 years, the field as a whole hasn't gotten that much closer to solving intelligence. And this is what the founders of the field uh, set out to do. They wanted to understand intelligence and to uh, develop it, to engineer it in machines. And actually, as a look uh, at uh, the then and the now, people are still very much, uh, they have very obscure idea what intelligence is as they had at the time. And um, what algorithms do we need? What modules do we need to combine to uh, develop a truly intelligent systems? So um, as it was pointed out by the founder of uh, one of the founders of this field, of this field you are bound to be thinking about this question if you, if you want to uh, develop uh, intelligent systems. And I almost hear you say, uh, that's not important. We already have a lot of systems uh, on which our many uh, apps are based, uh, right? So for image recognition, for speech recognition, for translating between uh, languages, and they all seem to be doing pretty good job. Uh, that's fair enough. But if you look at some other domains, so in robotics and education, healthcare, their people would benefit from having um, general purpose systems. So if you take robotics, how do you build a robot that is able to uh, go and work on a building site outdoors? So that robot will need common sense, will need a um, very developed understanding of the environment and the ability to uh, cope with changes in the environment. The same is with healthcare. So if you wanna have a social robot in a healthcare scenario, um, you need to equip that robot with the ability to uh, pick up on the very subtle cues in human communication and the ability to derive the meaning from those cues. And basically on, on this, uh, the robot is supposed to um, base its behavior as well, right? So all these, they are very much open questions and unresolved questions and very difficult questions to tackle. And perhaps they are difficult because we don't have a theory of intelligence. And this is unlike in other areas of research. So if you take physics with its uh, general relativity, biology has evolution, uh, chemistry has a periodic table. Um, the field of AI doesn't have a theory, a set of guiding principles about what intelligence is. And some people are saying that, okay, you only need a lot of data, you will be applying machine learning on it, and you will be scaling towards general purpose systems. But one, this is um, also a hotly debated uh, topic, whether that's true. And two, uh, why haven't uh, we built uh, then uh, the general purpose systems already? Because we do have a lot of data for certain tasks, for certain problems. and. So this is one issue. Another important issue, actually, um, there is this sometimes misguided thinking that you only need uh, computationally savvy people. So computer scientists, perhaps uh, neuroscientists, they are the ones uh, that are truly posed to be uh, solving intelligence and understanding it better. Whereas we think that actually, all the people across the board are very important. So historians, anthropologists, artists are equally important. And with this idea in mind, we started the AI Forward Forum Initiative as a platform for different people to come together uh, and to exchange ideas and to perhaps develop a new set of ideas, combined set of ideas that could be useful in um, 
thinking about uh, intelligence and developing uh, general purpose systems. And I know this sounds like a super ambitious uh, goal, but I think first of all, what we want to do is just raise awareness why this is important. And now Yudita will talk about the activities that we organize around this idea to well advance this cause. Yes, thank you. So uh, just let me repeat that uh, the goal of this AI for forum is to bring these fundamental questions regarding intelligence that Yulia talked about to the table and enable people from different fields to join the discussion. So designing and thinking about technology should not be the domain of the technologically inclined. It is a fundamentally human issue. Uh, therefore, this crosstalk between those who work in computer science and fields as diverse as anthropology, arts, culture, biology, sociology, to name a few, is crucial. So how uh, actually we uh, try to achieve it is we organize monthly talk series where we invite researchers and practitioners from diverse fields to present their work. Uh, so far, we already had a broad range of guests from different domains and even different countries and cultural backgrounds such as Professor Cecilia Hayes, who presented her work on social cognition, then a high-tech fashion designer, Anouk Wiprecht, introduced us to the emerging field of fashion tech, which is a rare combination of fashion design and engineering. Uh, and for example, Mark Serafin from Facebook AI, who joined our discussion on the superpowers of humans and machines and what it takes to create intelligent AI. So we invite our speakers from different areas because we truly believe that this diverse knowledge and expertise could enable scientific progress in a way that it wouldn't be possible only in a narrow uh, field. And to illustrate my point, I would like to tell you an example of what is possible to achieve if you combine the knowledge from different fields. And this example is from our talks. Uh, we recently hosted a talk given by Professor Josh Bongard and Professor Michael Levin. So George Bonward is an excellent expert in computer science and his research centers on evolutionary robotics, evolutionary computation and physical simulation. And in his lab, they use an evolutionary algorithm to create thousands of designs for the new life forms. So the computer would over and over assemble a few hundred simulated designs into different forms and body shapes. And for one of their experiments, they use basic rules about the biophysics of what a single frog uh, skin and cardiac cell can do. So the more successful simulated organisms were kept and refined and uh, while failed designs were tossed out. So this is where usually the experiments would stop. However, in collaboration with Professor Michael Levin and microsurgeon Douglas Blackiston, they managed to transfer these simulated designs into life. So first we gathered actual stem cells harvested from the embryos of African frogs, and then we separated them into single cells and left to incubate. So once the cells were cut, we joined them under a microscope into a close approximation of the design specified by the computer from Professor Josh Bongar's lab. And these assembled uh, body forms, never seen in the future, uh, they started working together, allowing these tiny cells, robots, to move on their own. So this is a fascinating thing, and I think it wouldn't be possible if they wouldn't combine this knowledge uh, between different domains. So uh, of course, this is just one of the examples out of many, and uh, we also think that it applies to the progress of AI. So uh, with that in mind, uh, just one more uh, time to repeat myself that uh, we aim to actually form a network of people interested in creating a roadmap or kind of a guideline for developing these machines that are social context aware and able to generalize or what you would say it's more uh, related to uh, general intelligence. Uh, and now just uh, about the talks itself, uh, we have a short uh, video of uh, our speakers and some great ideas uh, from our speakers, just to have a sneak peek. Human intelligence is not only primarily social in its function, but also that it's primarily social in its origins, that we get it primarily from other people rather than from the genes. 
if you don't have a certain enzyme in your in your genome, no amount of bioelectric signaling is going to get you that enzyme, right? If you need to turn chemical A into turn chemical B and you don't have the enzyme, bioelectricity signaling is not going to help you do that. But uh, but things like wings, uh, I, I mean, we haven't done wings, uh, but but it should be no problem because as long as the wings are made of the same kind of stuff that you, the building blocks, as long as your building blocks are present, um, no problem. Because you might have some digital agents that need to express or, or communicate certain messages from their face across say, a longer viewing distance or a, a much noisier channel. And so you'd want to amplify those signals and they, they can amplify them. We can't do that. They can, we can just make them have like popping eyes or very, you know, large movements. And so then humans would be able to see these from longer distances. So it might serve them well. Yeah, for me, uh, when kids see my breasts, they always, what I think is interesting, they look at how it works. And adults like to embrace the magic effect of what it does. And they don't really want to know how it works necessarily. If you have a child, a child and it comes up to the breast, it starts to challenge it. It's like, okay, where are the sensors? How does this work? You know, uh, where's the battery? They all have these very technical questions, which I think is funny because you would expect that from a mature person and a mature person would be like, oh, this is just a magical device, so that you know, so. So that was just a glimpse of how our uh, talks uh, look like, uh, what the discussions are like um, in the Q&A sessions. Um, and then just a couple of brief uh, uh, sentences, uh, words on um, the website that we run. So basically, uh, Marie has done a good job of uh, explaining it in a way uh, because she mentioned that, uh, yeah, we have uh, a newsletter that we send every yeah, every two weeks. And just to add to that, it's a theme driven uh, newsletter because every time we try to touch upon a different topic. So we uh, had a newsletter as well we uh, discussed uh, genetics. Then the last one was on why uh, AI is actually hard, why building uh, intelligence into machines is hard. And also for all the, um, if you would like to check out all the uh, talks that uh, we so far had uh, in, in the forum so we can do that and in addition to that you will find the record so first of all the recording of the of the talk is online in addition uh, there's uh, transcripts of the q a uh, sessions and also some resources that accompany each talk uh, if you want to deep a deep dive uh, into a particular topic and uh, as uh, regarding the, the upcoming events, so um, yeah, the, the next one is in December, December 16, uh, with Dr. Daniel White from uh, currently based uh, at the University of uh, Cambridge. He's a cultural anthropologist and he will be talking about his uh, ethnographic field work in Japan. So I think it's a very uh, fascinating topic too. And also we are all set for, uh, uh, next year, so for the first two months um, uh, of the 2022. So I hope you can join us. And if you want to, you can scan the QR code uh, that is on the slide. And you can also get in touch uh, with us uh, via this email and uh, yeah, to exchange also maybe your thoughts. Um, about uh, what we just discussed, uh, what we uh, were telling uh, you now. And I guess just sort of to finish it up, uh, I think me and Yudita would like to uh, wish you to be uh, as those kids, as you saw in the video, as discussed by Anuk Viprecht. So th the ones that are really curious and asking questions and trying to figure uh, the stuff out. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you.